so many good friends who helped make that are here with us today, and I want to thank each of them. Our next speaker was featured in the video, and many of you heard her speak just um, an hour or so ago as our keynote speaker for our Phil's Day um, lecture. Janice Elig was named by Business Week as one of the world's most influential headhunters. She's a 1968 University of Iowa graduate with more than 20 years experience as a senior level corporate executive. She's currently co-CEO of Chaddock Elig, an executive search firm in New York City. Not only was Janice our keynote speaker today, but she's also a generous University of Iowa donor, mentor, and a good friend to many of us. She's made several notable University of Iowa gifts, including a scholarship for women students in the College of Public Health in memory of her sister, Adrienne Astolfi Eddins. Um, it's a joy for me to learn from Janice, and it's a privilege for me to introduce her to you today. It's truly an honor to be on the Foundation Board. Sally Mason, you are a fabulous president of the university, and it is an honor to be here. And uh, President Lynette um, Marshall, it is a privilege to be on the Foundation Board, so thank you for having me. Um, I'm just going to speak briefly about the scholarship program that I have in my sister's name, because we'll, while we make some other donations to the university, this is the one that is nearest and dearest to my heart because there are 15 women that uh, we started a scholarship in my sister's name in 1999. It's at the master's level in the College of Public Health. And these women, um, on their own, are now giving back to the scholarship fund. They started this last year. And while they may not be making a lot of money, they have started to give back in, with ph philanthropy, uh, honoring Phil's Day. Um, to this fund, so they are giving back in their own way, and I am really, really proud of these women. They have, many of them have dual degrees, um, degree in Masters of Public Health, as well as MBAs, as well as JDs, so they are really gonna change the world going forward. Um, you can't probably see this, but every year I get an update with their pictures, and this goes into a frame in my office, so I can look at these wonderful women, who uh, ages 22 to now 36 um, have children, or, or not, but one actually just gave birth to her fifth son, and she works still part-time in public health, and they really will change what public health is in the future. But this is the legacy for my sister, and um, this will be forever, uh, forevermore um, dear in, in, to my heart. So the University of Iowa, uh, 30 years ago, when I, was it more than 30 years ago, that I, <laughs> that I graduated, um, really gave to me more than I can ever give back to the University of Iowa. And I think the campaign that is underway is going to be a remarkable one. And I hope that everyone will give whatever they can at whatever level, because I think for generations to come, the University of Iowa will benefit so many Hawkeyes. So it is my privilege to be on the foundation board. It is an honor to be serving here. And for a native New Yorker to return so many years later and come back at least twice a year, regardless of the time it takes to get here, I have, I have to tell you, in my heart is forever, is Iowa forevermore. Thank you so much. Thank you, Janice. We've spoken uh, specifically about the fact that this campaign will benefit students, and it's a joy to be able to invite a student to speak today. Nick Ralston is a University of Iowa student. He's actually a Minneapolis native, not quite as far as New York City, but from the state north of us, and he's majoring in physics and math and will graduate in 2014. He'll also be speaking at our comprehensive campaign kickoff tomorrow night. So Nick, I'd invite you to come forward and make a few remarks about your Hawkeye story. Thank you. The Hubert H. Hubert H. Humphrey Metrodome erupted with cheers. Thousands upon thousands of the Hawkeye faithful hooted 
hollered and taunted the home crowd with spirited chants of I O W A. None, however, were louder than my father, who was celebrating in a frenzied mob of black and gold clad fans. It was November 22nd, 2008, and in Minnesota's last game ever at the Metrodome, the Hawks had just won 55 to zero. No. I wiped the tears away from the corner of my eyes and stared blankly at the ground with anguish. My precious Minnesota Gophers had just been pummeled for the eight millionth time and the Floyd of Rosedale was leaving for the much hated Iowa City. And yet, here I am standing before you today, forever and always a Hawkeye. Thank you. But that, that brings us to the obvious question. Uh, at what point did I get my head screwed on properly? At what point did I leave the dark side and come to the Hawkeyes? Well, first of all, like I said, I was sick and tired of following a team that lost over and over again. Um, but more importantly, the important, generous private support I cannot speak enough to, it made possible for me to attend this university. Uh, my mother grew up in the war-torn country of Uganda under the genocidal ways of dictator Idi Amin. Her family fled the country with only the clothes on their backs when she was 13 years old. And she taught me the value of a dollar from a very young age. Uh, my dad affect affectionately calls her the June Cleaver of Uganda. She spent 20 years raising me at home and quit her job for me. So she put up with a lot. Um, as a physics and math major, the presidential scholarship has allowed me to attend this university without a penny in student loans. Um, I've had the freedom to spend 20 hours a week in the Iowa Advanced Technology Lab uh, performing independent research uh, with a $1.5 million state-of-the-art nanotechnology facility. Um, last summer, I spent 10 weeks uh, re researching in Haifa, Israel uh, in quantum computing at the Technion Institute of Technology. And uh, this summer, I'll be heading to Janice's home state of New York. I'll be spending 10 weeks in Ithaca researching at Cornell University, um, exploring graphene, which is a carbon-based material. Uh, it's one of the strongest materials ever tested, and it actually can be made lighter than air. No matter what our backgrounds, each student at the University of Iowa has his or her own Hawkeye journey. It begins with a top-notch education, and it continues long after we earn our degrees. Now, I am very proud to call myself an Iowa Hawkeye, and I am even prouder to say that the Floyd of Rosedale is currently at its rightful home <laughs> in the great Iowa City. Let's keep it that way. Thank you very much. Thanks, Nick. We're proud to have you as a Hawkeye. It's a good thing. It's a great thing. Uh, I'm delighted now to introduce our final speaker. Tom Hansen serves as the chair of the University of Iowa Foundation Board, as well as one of the four co-chairs of this comprehensive campaign for Iowa Forevermore. Tom comes from a rich Hawkeye tradition in his family. Both of his parents are University of Iowa graduates, and it's been a joy for me to work with him as chair of the Foundation Board. Tom? Well, Nick, you're a hard act to follow. <laughs> um, so my job is to kind of wrap up um, this uh, wonderful program. Um, so I want to thank our uh, foundation president, Len Lynette Marshall, University of Iowa president, Sally Mason, my fellow campaign co-chair, Janice Elleg, and our UI student, Nick Rolston, for what you have um, said to us today. You've each spoken to the true meaning of this campaign and how it will enrich this university through the student experience, the lives of Iowans, and also to help this university create new ways to bring creativity and expertise across the world. As you've already heard, uh, for Iowa forevermore, is a very ambitious campaign, certainly the largest in this university's history, the largest in the state of Iowa history, as well as one of the most ambitious campaigns 
nationally for a public university of similar size. So it is an important event that we are underway with. And it speaks directly to the aspirations of our university to grow and increase our role as a world-class institution representing Iowa to the world. As a graduate of the College of Engineering, longer ago, Janice, than you, um, I share Janice's commitment to the importance of private support. Several years ago, my wife and I provided funding for a Center for Technical Communication when Barry Butler was the engineering dean within the Engineering College. It's a program that is integrated into the curriculum and is directed toward helping our graduates become excellent communicators as well as outstanding engineers. Both of our gifts are integral to the commitment that this university is making to help students succeed, an important part of the campaign as you have heard. Janice and I share another commitment in common. We both serve on the Foundation Board of Directors. It's been a pleasure for both of us to serve in that role. And we're just a couple among a large and growing group of students, graduates, family, and friends who care deeply about this university and show it through their actions. The campaign, campaign offers donors many ways to participate, and you've heard about most of them already. Scholarships, programs, faculty support, bricks and mortar, all directed toward helping the University of Iowa reach its goals. So we hope you feel the enthusiasm and energy this campaign is generating. We surely share it, don't we? Yes. <laughs> So for Iowa forevermore, if any of you in the media or others have questions, we and our other staff will be available up here for individual one-on-one -on -dis one -on -one discussions with you. Um, and we thank you very much for coming. We're adjourned. Thank you.